we have invited you uh, so that you can uh, give us uh, your side of the show regarding um, um, the budget because right now we are in the cluster committees where we are looking and scrutinizing budgets, especially for those that are subvented by government, and you are. So uh, we'll be looking forward to your presentation to, 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 to tell us what uh, uh, you've observed, the areas where you feel uh, Parliament can assist, we'll be uh, ready to do so. But before we do that, we uh, will start with introductions so that you know the members of parliament that are in the health cluster. Starting from my left, uh, please uh, uh, introduce yourself. Through you, Chair, my name is Betha mackenzie Debele, member of parliament for Baraka West. Thank you, Chair, and a member of health committee. Through you, Chair, I'm one of the famous Magonjo, Machinga Southeast, and I'm a member of HIV committee. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Through you, uh, my name is Ishmael Grant, MP for Mangochi Masongola, and uh, Vice Chair of uh, HIV and Nutrition Committee. Thank you. From the, the far right. Thank you, Chair. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Lyman Zipondo, a member of Parliament from Cheo North, and a member of the Health Committee. Thank you. Good afternoon, through you, Chair. I am Kamlepo Kalua, Member of Parliament for Rumpist and a member of the WFA Committee. Thank you. Thank you. Through you, Chair, I'm Felix Kadov Kaila, MP Kanga Northwest, Member of WFA Committee. Thank you, Chair. I'm Ronnie Chijere Piri, Member of Parliament for Zumba Chingad, and a member of HIV. Through Chair, I'm Yahad Sadala, MP for Ankara Southeast, and I'm also a member of HIV and Nutrition Committee. Thank you. Through Chair, I'm Yuli Davaleda, Member of Parliament for Sanja Southwest. I'm also a Vice Chair for Health Committee. Thank you. Those are the members of Parliament. We also have four members from Secretariat, that is the Parliament, uh, to introduce themselves, starting over there. Through you, Chair, my name is Grace Wongolo, Secretariat. Thank you. Through you, Honorable Chairperson, I'm Ole Mujuya from Parliament Secretariat. Thank you. Honorable Chairperson, I am Wangani Nyoenda from Parliament Secretariat. Thank you, Honorable Chair. Thank you so much. We also have uh, members of um, members from the uh, Minister of Finance, the Treasury. They are here with us for the whole two weeks to give us guidance on the on the budget and also so that they can hear directly for for themselves from you. I ask them to introduce themselves. Thank you, Chair and Honourable Members. I'm Simbarsha Mwadio from the Ministry of Finance. Good afternoon, Chair and your Honourable Committee. My name is Lev Chirwa, a Deputy Director uh, in the Ministry of Finance, Treasury. Thank you. Thank you so much. And as you've heard, this committee, this cluster is uh, headed by two committee chairs. And uh, the, the other chair is on my, on my right right now. Maybe you can introduce him, sir. Uh, through Chair, I'm Darlington Harawa, representing the people of Lower Central and the chairperson of the HIV AIDS and Nutrition Committee of Parliament. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much. My name is Matthew Zengwale. I'm the chairperson of the Health Committee. I'm also a member of Parliament for Chiradzul West. Uh, you're most welcome, and uh, we are ready to, uh, to listen to you. Uh, to your presentations. After the presentation, there will be questions to be asked. But before you do that, uh, we will ask you to also introduce yourselves so that members of the committee may know uh, your team. Thank you. Honorable Chair, 
I am Judith Trembo, the Registrar of Nurses and Nurses Council of Malawi, and I will start from the first. Uh, Chair and Honourable Members, my name is John Nebiala, the Acting Director of Professional Practice and Conduct Directorate, Nurses and Midwives Council. Through you, Chair and Honourable Members, I'm Osesio Sakale Abidon, Senior Finance Officer. To you, Chair, I'm Immaculate Mpita Pita. I'm the Senior Human Resource Management Officer for Nurses and Midwife Council. Chair, Honorable Members, my name is Jonathan Mwakiru. I'm the Director of Finance and Administration. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, we know each other now and we are ready to listen. Um, uh, be mindful of time. You, we don't have much time. We have uh, a maximum of 30 minutes, everything, presentation and discussion. So you, the first 20 minutes, uh, I expect you to do the presentation. Thank you. If the, if the uh, technology is an issue, we have hard copies, so you, you can be reading through your computer and uh, taking us through here, we'll be able to follow. present the progress report for Nurses and Nurses Council of Malawi for the year just has, that has just ended, as well as the current budget. So I have introduction, which is uh, my outline of the presentation. I have one introduction, Castle's performance for 2021-2022 financial year, budget for 2022-2023, financial year and funding advocacies of the allocation against the activities and the conclusion. <coughs> so on introduction, first we are, I want to talk about the professional organization that is the nurses and midwives, nurses and midwives profession. How is it organized? The, the profession has got four nursing and midwifery entities working together to improve patient health outcome. And these entities include the regular body, which is the Nurses and Midwives Council of Malawi. And our main role is to regulate the nursing and midwifery profession, set standards for the practice in line with international standards of nursing and midwifery, ICM as well as the International Council, International Council for Midwives, as well as International Council for Nurses and Mid Nurses alone. <clears throat> we also have the Nursing and Midwifery Associations and Unions. These are the mouthpiece of the profession. And in Malawi, we have got two of them, the, Na the National Organization of Nurses and the Malawian, Malawian Midwives Association. Then we have the other arm, which is the practice, where we have good nurses and midwives who are providing care to the patients. Then the last entity is the academia, where we have good nurses who are teaching the new nurses in the profession. So, nurses and girls castle mandate, as I said already, we are mandated by the Nurses and Midwives Act, number 
16 of 1995 to regulate the education, training, practice and professional conduct of nurses and midwives in order to protect the public from unsafe practice. And we have a vision which is a, to be an efficient, effective and proactive regulator of nursing and midwifery profession in Malawi. And our mission is to provide nursing and midwifery regulatory services in order to promote public safety and foster public confidence in Malawi. We have three strategic objectives. The first objective is to promote safe practice of nurses and midwives <clears throat> according to the standards and evidence-based quality nursing and midwifery care. The second objective is to enhance provision of quality nursing and midwifery education and training and to ensure effective financial planning, accountability, and transparency. Core activities of the Council, according to the Nurses and Midwives Act, its inspection, monitoring and evaluation of nursing and midwifery education, training, practice, and professional conduct of nurses and midwives in Malawi. In, in this, to achieve this, the Council is uh, mandated to visit all health facilities as well as training institutions just to ensure that the training as well as the practice is being carried out in accordance with the state standards. Development of nursing and medical regulatory tools or policies, for example, the standards I've already talked about, scopes of practice, code of ethics, just to mention a, a few to guide the profession. Administration of licensure examination, just to ensure that the nurses, the newly graduated nurses, have got the required skills and competencies. Investigation of reported complaints about nursing and midwifery services from the public, in case people are not satisfied with, their, with the care that the nurses are providing, they lodge complaints to the council, and it is our mandate to investigate those cases. Indexing of all students, who are undergoing nursing and midwifery training, registration of all nurses and midwives in Malawi in order to protect the public from unsafe practice. That is, each and every nurse who is, has qualified is, re, is supposed to register with us and scrutinize their qualifications to ensure that those who are practicing in the hospitals, indeed, they are nurses and midwives. Accreditation of nursing and midwifery training institutions, as well as nursing programs and the midwife or nurse led private health facilities. On the performance, key, perform key financial highlights, I'm going to jump to that one. It will be presented by the Director of Finance. So I will start on page nine on major achievements. So major achievements during the 2021-2022 financial year, I will start talking on the achievements under nursing and midwifery regulatory services. During the year, a total of 1,287 candidates passed the licensure examinations which were administered in June and in June and November. This makes an, this has increased the number of nurses by 1,287 from the total that we had. And uh, within the year, we have about eight. We had about 18 international nurses and midwives who registered with us on temporary basis to work in Malawi. However, within the same year. We also had 31 Malawi nurses who verified with us that they wanted to work outside Malawi. We also indexed about 606 nationals, students in our colleges, and we also developed and reviewed nursing and midwifery education regulatory tools 
that is monitoring and evaluation tools for health facilities and compulsory modules for CPD. Within the year, the board approved recruitment of four officers for the Mzuzu Regional Office and interviews were conducted. As of now, only I have one office in Nilongwe, which is the head office, and we intend to open another office in the north. The Minister of Justice finalized the internal review of the amended bill for the nurses and midwives, and the stakeholders validated the document, and currently the Minister of Justice is incorporating the comments that were made by the stakeholders. Just to remind you that we are reviewing the 1995 Nurses and Midwives Act, and we are at this stage as of now. Approval and dissemination of regulatory tools. We also conducted training of lecturers on curriculum implementation. We conducted accreditation of 10 nursing and midwifery training institutions and programs. And we also launched the care standards, nursing care standards, to guide the profession on nursing and midwifery practice. We did inspection for compliance to set standards in six health facilities and two training institutions. And nine out of the reported complaints from the public during the period were investigated. We also conducted supportive supervision for CBD activities in, health, in 30 health facilities. Stakeholders meeting was conducted with the hospital advisory committee, hospital ombudsman, district health management team, nurses and midwives in the southeast zone, just to ensure that the public is aware of the nurses and midwives council and what are our duties, and just for visibility and accessibility. We also decided to store, to install a door free line so that we improve communication with our stakeholders, including the public. During the year on the finance and administration, external audit for 2020-2021 financial year was conducted. The board meetings were conducted as scheduled. We also conducted review meetings on implementation of public sector reforms. We filled the positions of the Registrar and the Director of Finance and Administration. We also conducted customer care training for our members of staff. We also said settlement of all statutory obligations was done, that is pension, contribution, pay and fringe benefits tax. Submission of government monthly income and expenditure report to the Minister of Finance was done. Verification of registration numbers for online CPD for nurses and midwives. Updating of nursing and midwifery status. Updating the website for nurses and midwives council as well as the Facebook. Much as we have these um, achievements, we also had some challenges in the implementation of our activities during the year. The first challenge is that the process of formatting the amended bill into legal language is taking long. We started reviewing this act around 2015, but up to now it is not yet finalized. Inadequate finances, which makes the council fail to carry out some of its core activities, especially on inspection and monitoring of health facilities and training institutions. Some employers still recruit unlicensed nurses and midwives, which is a breach of the Nurses and Midwives Act. Inadequate fleet of vehicles leading to inability to execute castles activities. High numbers of complaints from the public on malpractice, negligence, and the misconduct of our nurses and midwives. Inadequate funds to establish satellite deep depots prolong the recruitment process for executive officers. What I'm trying to say is that when the executive office fell vacant, it takes long for that to be filled. 
An example is the Director of Professional Practice that was fell vacant in 2019 up to now, and we've noted few did. High default rate on payment of annual registration fee by nurses and midwives, which also cripples the financial status of the council. I will skip this page 14, and I will continue with the Page 23, funding addresses of the allocation versus planned activities. The government subvention towards personal enrollment is estimated at 266 million kwacha against the budget of 508 million, resulting in a shortfall of two. For the two. This was the initial, initial figure that we were given from the Treasury that we are, they are going to give us the 266 million. However, we have just received the communication that it has been reduced to 177 million, which means there is a shortfall of 331 million, and we feel this is a huge reduction and it will have a great impact on the delivery of services of the council. Also, as part of public sector reforms, the council plans to enhance visibility and accessibility of the degraded services by the general public through establishment of regional office. However, this will also require additional human, financial, and, financial and material resources. The council has a fleet of vehicles, despite so many efforts to have them replaced. And over the years, it's been too expensive to maintain this old fleet. Therefore, the council requests the government to expedite the process of procurement of um, the vehicles. We planned to procure some vehicles, but due to the processes, we failed to do so. And we also received the uh, communication that we are going to get some vehicles from uh, Minister of Finance, but up to now we have not received the vehicles. So it's still a challenge for us. It is also a regular requirement to conduct monitoring and evaluation twice on all health facilities and the training institutions every year. This is not achieved due to cash flow challenges and aged fleet of vehicles. And this really to increase the cases of negligence and misconduct by our nurses and midwives, resulting in increased public dissatisfaction on nursing and midwifery services rendered. In conclusion, in conclusion therefore, the council applauds the government for favorably making, making funding a provision for 2021-2022 financial year to meet the mandate for the benefit of the whole Malawi nation and the promotion of the health of its citizen. It is in this regard that we are hopeful that the government will both technically and financially assist the council during the 2022-2023 financial year. I will hand over the presentation to the Director of Finance to go through the budget. Thank you, Chair, Honorable Members. With your permission, I will just take, I'll run you through quickly the financial aspects of our presentation. Let's go back to page six. Page six, we are just giving a highlight of the performance for the 2021-2022. I must say, uh, uh, Chair, from the outset that uh, this is within the context of a shorter financial calendar uh, this particular year, and this has had an impact on our financial performance because some of the, some, most of our income streams now are having to fall into the new financial calendar. The total revenue collection for the period of 31st January, Chair, was just about 322.9 million, 
against a budget target of 421 million. This represents a 23% under collection. Major under collections were registered under registration fees, which as you held earlier, the registrar alluded to the fact that we are facing a high default rate um, uh, in this particular line item from the nurses and midwives that doesn't pay the registration fees. And then we also had examination fees under collecting by 23% and of course rentals. We also have some partnership with our donors, but I think unfortunately over the period we did not, they did not remit any funds. Going to the next slide, Chair, on the expenditure side of things, uh, a total of 416.4 million was recorded against a budget provision for the same period amounting to 511 million, representing a favorable variance of 19%. This, in a sense, implies that uh, our expenditure is within the budget so far. <clears throat> next, page seven, um, there, it's the same information, but uh, now we are simply um, showing you the table and each of those items. We will have columns for the 2021-2022 approved budget and then the budget for the period that we are reporting, July to January 2022, and then the actual expenditure up to 31st January. And then the other column is uh, uh, same period, but uh, last year, just for comparative purposes. And then uh, the next column, uh, 2021, 2022, July to December variance, basically comparing uh, how, how we performed to date against the budget for the same period. And then uh, the, to your far right, you have a performance rate which gives percentage of what. So under each of those items, you can see, for example, government subvention, um, uh, uh, we are at 98 percent. Basically, we are saying 98 percent of what government committed um, has displaced to us. Registration fees, we are at 60 percent. And as you can see, the under correction in bracket there is 46 million. Verification fees, we've done pretty much well because I think we've been able to meet our target. Indexing fees, again, this is another line item where we've been able to um, beat our target by 5%. Examination fees, um, uh, there we had a, an under correction by, uh, of about 11.9 million. Further down, we have other receipts. Um, again, there we beat our target by about 10%. And then development partners, like I said, you can see a 0% there, we did not uh, receive anything for the period. So as you can see, the totals there, um, our, pro our target, our approved budget was 576, our target was 421 million. Uh, by 31st January, we had collected 322.9 million as I earlier indicated. Compare it to last year, we had collected just about 317 million, and then we have an under collection by 98 million, representing 23% under collection. Chair, we move to the next page. The expenditure side. On the expenditure side, again, um, uh, we are showing the columns there under each of the line items. We are showing the approved budget and then the budget for July to January 2022 and then the actual for the same period and then we are comparing the actual against the budget. That gives you the variances there, and then the same variances expressed as percentage terms. So I could, as you can see, I think the key message there is that across the departments, expenditure is well within budget. The registrar department, for example, we've spent 92% of the budget for the same period. Professional practice, education and training, finance and being, all the way down um, up to this right below there. In total, uh, against the our approved budget was 657 million. Our target for the period under review was to spend 511 million, but we have spent 416 um, million. Last year, same debt, we had spent 340 million, and then we have a, a, a budget saving of uh, 
94.8 million. Chair, at this stage, I'll take you straight to the budget, which is on page, page 14. Page 14. Starting with the budget highlights, Chair, Honorable Members, the proposed budget for 2022-2023 has prioritized the following strategic areas. Safe practice of nurses and midwives according to standards, quality nursing and midwife education and training services, accessibility and visibility of uh, NMCM services through opening satellite offices, stakeholder meetings, corporate social responsibility, and TV and radio programs. And then, of course, also financial sustainability of the council has been prioritized. Further down, we also upgrading of e-nursing system, long-term capital development project, construction of a Zamba house, this is basically meant to improve our long-term uh, financial sustainability, and then we'll also have uh, support services there by way of management and administration services. Page 15, they are still under budget highlights. Total income for 2022-2023 is estimated to increase by 78% to 1.27 billion from 577 million in 2021-2022. Government subvention is expected, well, I think at the time of reporting, the expectation that we had was that the government subvention would be 266 um, million, but uh, as you've heard uh, from the registrar in her presentation, we now have communication to the effect that uh, our allocation would be 177 million, and that, that obviously will have a, a huge impact on our income estimates. Moving further down, total expenditure <coughs> for 2022-2023, chair, is estimated to increase by 56% to 1022 billion from 657 million in 2021-2022. The current expenditure is set to increase by 61% to 949 million um, in 2022-2023, up from 588 million. Capital expenditure will go up by 13%. To 78 million from 69 million. The expenditure estimates for 2022-2023 reflects implementation of the strategic priorities that I've already highlighted earlier. Moving on to page 16, Chair, Honourable Members, um, same information. We are just uh, um, uh, presenting in a table form uh, for the income. There, you can see that under each of the line items, we are. Um, showing you the actual for 2020-2021 for comparative purposes, and then the approved budget for 2021-2022, and then the proposed estimates for 2022-2023. And then we are showing the percentage increase over the last budget, and then the percent of total budget. I think the key message there, as you can see, Chair, government salvation constitutes 26% of our of our income, Regist and he, like I said, it was, we, we had estimated it to increase by 100%, but I think the information now um, is different. Registration fees, uh, we anticipate it to increase by 119%, and the registration fees forms the biggest proportion of our income at 32%. Then we have verification fees, which is estimated to increase by 55%, rental income increased by 49%, indexing fees will increase by 56%. Further down, examination fees are expected to increase by 69%. Accreditation fees, 38%. <coughs> uh, practitioner's fees, 2%. Other receipts, 21%. Moving further to page 17, uh, development partners estimated to increase by 22%. In total, we estimate that uh, um, our budget, we, we've estimated our budget at 1.27 billion up from 576 million. But like I said, still the final seeding that we've received now will change the picture of this budget. Expenditure side, Chair, the slide below. Again, we're showing you 
um, under each of the line items how much we spent last year, um, the approved budget for 2021-2022, and then the proposed uh, expenditure estimates for 2022-2023, and then how this by what rate it has increased over the previous year, and then the percent of the total budget. So we start with the registrar's department there, it has increased by 106%, and that constitutes 10% of our total expenditure budget. Board members increased by 8%, and constitutes 5% of our total budget. Professional practice department has increased by 83%, and that constitutes 8% of our budget. Education and training, has increased by 57% and that constitutes 12% of our budget. Moving to the next page 18, Chair. Um, finance and administration has increased by 51% and it constitutes 37% of our total expenditure budget. Capital expenditure has increased by 13% and it constitutes 8% of our total budget. So in total, um, uh, our expenditure budget has increased by 56% from 657 million to 1.2. 1.02 billion in 2022, 2023. Uh, the slide below there is also presenting the same information, but now in terms of expenditure category. Suffice to say that personal monuments are, are expected to increase by 85% because there are a couple of recruitments uh, to fill vacant positions in the establishment. And then the other kind of transactions are set to increase by 39% and they constitute 42% of the budget and then we have capital expenditure, like I already said, is increased by 13%. So in total, um, our budget is, the total is 657 million for previous year, moving to 1.02 billion current year, 2023. Chair, on page 19, we have the financial targets. Chair, the council, um, targets to increase its own internally generated income by 72% to 762 million from 444 million. This is what we plan to generate internally, excluding the government subvention. The council also targets 100, 100 compliance with the budget line allocations. Further down, a utilization of allocated funds. The council will ensure that allocated funds as per budgeted cash flows are 100% utilized on the programs and activities for which they were appropriated and intended. Page 20, Chair, Honorable Members. Uh, cost reduction. The council will undertake cost savings of about 3.5 million through, among others, use of framework agreement, um, uh, where we anticipate about 2.4 million in savings. We we'll also, as much as possible, try to use our own qualified mechanics in servicing the vehicles, and that we estimate uh, to save about 1.2 million. And uh, we will also um, collaborate with our development partners, like I said earlier on, um, writing proposals for funding um, and that is expected to generate about 24.8 million or so. The resources saved will therefore be channeled to increase service coverage. I move on to non-financial targets, Chair Honorable Members. Um, uh, we target to review the strategic plan for the Council. It's coming to an end in 2022. We also target to we target 100 compliance with statutory ob obligations, PYE, pension, and so on. Page 21, Chair, inspection of health facilities in 10 districts. Uh, we also target to investigate all reported cases and, dis and conduct disciplinary hearings for the average misconduct among um, practicing nurses and midwives. We also target to administer two licensure exams in the coming year, development and review of nursing and midwifery uh, regulatory documents, dissemination of regulatory tools and revised nurses and midwives act, hoping that uh, we will have the act done by that time, reinforcement of CPD activities, verification of foreign trained nurses, still under non-financial targets, chair on page 22 now, 
develop and review nursing and midwifery education syllabi, conduct accreditation ex exercises for 10 nursing and midwifery training institutions and the programs, conduct monitoring and evaluation of 17 training institutions, conduct an induction session for newly recruited lecturers and tutors in training institutions, develop a resource mobilization strategy for the council, collaborate with medical council in lobbying for deduction of registration source, registration fees at source through payroll, opening satellite office in the northern region to enhance visibility and accessibility of the council services by the general public. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much. Um, I'm, I'm very impressed by uh, the speed of our presentation and accuracy of uh, our presentation. Very good. Um, honorable members, uh, it's time for us now to ask questions. If you have any questions uh, uh, to the council. Yes, Honorable Karu, I can see anybody else who is, um, because we will take one round of questions. Thank you very much, Vice Chair. Anybody else? Okay, uh, let's start with Honorable Karu. Uh, thank you, Chair. We had so many questions, but due to time, I think we will limit, uh, I will limit myself to one or two. Um, going uh, and the, looking at page six, um, you have a history of uh, what you, the figures were put here of collecting more money for the government. You are talking about the 31st January, as you alluded to, 322 million. January 20, 21, um, 317 against a budget target of 421. But if you look at the allocation, page 3, um, which I am not happy with it, uh, page 3, there's the nurses and the midwives, council 177. What was the basis, uh, I mean, for you to get 177 when you collected so much money? And yes, I was following you up when you were doing all the activities, financial activities, and whatever expenditure that you want or you, you are doing. But I am surprised, Chair, that 177 million against what they are collecting. What would be the what was the basis for this? And the, I'm not impressed. This is an institution, a professional institution, that is doing a training our doctors, that is controlling um, laissez-faire attitude in the medical uh, uh, areas, and yet they are not given enough money to facilitate their activities. Red Cross is given 500 million, when they are not even doing anything apart from just receiving that money. A productive institution like this one is given 177. Why? Thank you very much. Um, next, I think, uh, Honorable Vice Chair. Thank you, Chair. Through you, I, I would like to know from the, the director about the CPD. From my experience, I feel that CPD only works in the district hospitals, central hospitals, not in the rural hospitals, like health centers in the rural, rural areas. So how do you manage these rural area, areas? Secondly, uh, in the previous years, there were ma so many nurses going outside the country looking for green pastures. And from the presentation, there is only 31 nurses who left for USA, UK, and RIC last previous year. How have you managed to curb this problem? And the third one, Chair, from the presentation, it seems this fiscal year the council will make a lot of money despite being given 177 million. And I feel maybe this money, they will be, they will get more money from maybe registration and other user fees for the nurses. Chair, I feel it's not fair with this economic crisis 
that uh, these nurses they should also they should be charged a lot of fees to get a license. And I think as a committee, I think we need we needed to fight for this chair because nurses are being treated are not treated well on the user fees to for them to practice each and every year they are supposed to pay i think is it is called a registration or license fee i don't know so i feel nurses are not treated well think of the policemen they work without paying any fees teachers they work without paying any fees why only nurses and the medical other medical teams they pay for them to work in Malam. Thank you, Chair. Um, thank you very much. I think that's a very, very important point she has raised. Uh, um, the nurses, as I was saying, this may be in your absence, that uh, if you look at this country if, and, and the health institutions, it is the nurse that is co commonly found in most health institutions. Even in the very rural uh, health, uh, health center, you are going to find a nurse. You will not find the medical doctor. But then they are being subjected to this punishment where they have to pay for their existence. I think that is very unfair indeed. And, uh, and these are people we need most. And their salaries are also not that high. And then yet they are sub subjected to this. I don't know, uh, do, do you counsel or uh, senior people pay this also? Do you also pay fees monthly? I'm asking you that. Hmm? <laughs> I wanted to know, because if, if you are paying, maybe it makes sense. But if you are not, then you have to think twice about it. These are people who are serving our people in the constituencies and they can't be subjected to this very unfair thing. The other thing also is I've seen is that uh, uh, I wanted to praise you for uh, you are running this organization very, very well. Um, actually, you, you can easily become independent the way I see uh, your figures here. Because uh, there's a, I think somewhere I saw that uh, you, are, you are failing to collect by maybe 33 percent? Yeah. That is, uh, that's something that is in your hands. You're failing to collect. So if you collected, you would balance your books. Because uh, by the end of the day, government wants to see as many organizations as possible being independent, uh, looking after themselves, so that the money can go into areas uh, which are heavily needed. You know, our country doesn't generate a lot, and therefore it's, there's little to go all over the place. So maybe those are issues that you can uh, look at. Thank you so much. Those are the questions. Can you please uh, uh, briefly uh, answer them uh, so that we can see whether they will generate other questions. Thank you. Chair, honorable members, thank you very much. I think I'll tackle the, the first question. I think um, the way I held it, it was like it's going to the authorities in government where we, I think the honorable member asked about what were the basis for allocating 177 million down from 266 million. So I think we may not be in a position to really Unless I, we didn't capture, I didn't capture the question well. Honorable member. Honorable Kalua, maybe you can repeat your question. I am saying um, the question was not directed at them, but it was directed at the Minister of Finance. I am saying these people are contributing to account number one. You can see an impressive figure that they are doing. And yet they are punished. They are punished in the sense that they are given 177 million. The annual budget, Red Cross, which is not contributing anything, just receiving and enjoying, they are given, even if when they are sick, they go to see a nurse, as you have said. 
when they, 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 they are meeting their victims, they refer them to the doctors. And these people are doing, you know, professional work, trying to prevent bogus doctors, bogus nurses that would come and destroy our lives. Yet they are given 177. Red Cross given 500. What would be the basis of this? I'm, I'm just speaking on their behalf. I'm angry. Oh, you don't have to answer it. I think no, they don't have to. It is the Minister of Finance. Yeah, it's just something that angers me. Yeah, get you. Thank you. The Minister of Finance is uh, thinking about that, so you can proceed to answer the other questions. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> the other area was the, on CBD. I'll ask the Director of, fin of um, Professional Practice and Conduct, because it's his area of practice, to take up that question. Uh, Chair and Honourable Members, uh, let me first of all thank the Honourable Member for picking up the issue to do with continuing professional development, CPD. Uh, indeed, uh, as a council, we do realize that uh, our profession is dynamic. Things keep on changing. As such, the practitioners also have to keep abreast of the changes that are happening in terms of service provision. And uh, that's why we started implementing CBD. And indeed, we are facing challenges when it comes to implementing CBD at the health centers. Like you rightly pointed that it's, it's easily done at uh, district hospitals as well as central hospitals. But what we have done is that uh, we want to minimize the movement of nurses in the health centers to district hospitals or central hospitals. So we have kind of created clusters where we have, for instance, a health center with four nurses and another nearby health center has three nurses. What we encourage is that these two health centers can meet and share information in terms of uh, updating their knowledge and skills. So that's what we are trying to do to make it easier for the health center nurses. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Honorable. Thank you, Chair. <coughs> I will continue with the other questions. Why are nurses not going out as they used to be in the past? What measures have we put in place to control the, that exodus? <coughs> My response is that as a council, our main duty is to verify the councils from other, those countries that the nurses go, they do write us just to verify if that nurse is in good standing with the council, has got no other um, cases to answer. She's a good nurse. She can provide quality care. So our duty is to provide that, <coughs> that report to the, to the country where the nurse is going. So when the nurses are going out, they have to come to us to report to us that we are going out and we write those letters straight to the council of that country. Currently, other countries <coughs> did put their strict measures because there was an outcry that we had a critical shortage in Malawi. So many nurses went out. And because of that, we had that uh, emergency training of nurses. And it was an outcry all over. So there was, uh, I think, is it even? There was an increase, a 52% salary increase for nurses so that they can remain. But as of now, countries like US, they have opened up again. And this exodus has just started. So these 31 are the ones that we have verified only this year. So probably so many nurses will now be going out. So as a country, maybe we have to put up measures that we control our nurses from leaving the country and is to avoid having the crisis again. That's how I can respond on that one. And uh, why do we charge registration fee? Nurses and midwife, nursing and midwifery is a profession. So as a profession, we are supposed to safeguard our profession. Only those that are really willing to practice should be practicing. 
And when they are renewing their registration, they also show CPD. Because we say nursing is dynamic. And uh, there are so many changes happening. So when they do their CPD, they come to register with us to continue practicing the profession. So it's not only in Malawi where nurses pay registration fee. It's all over the world, everywhere, a nurse pays registration fee to continue practicing the profession. It's a, a life-saving profession, so we need the people who are dedicated and the passion coming from you in order to continue practicing this profession. Otherwise, we find people who are not practicing, they have not done their CPD, they have not done registration, but they have committed a crime. Which nurses council is supposed to resolve that crime? So we are just trying to protect our profession. <clears throat> On the same vein, there was a question to say, do you also pay the registration? Yes, we all pay the registration. Even us who are working at the nurses' council, we also pay the, reg the annual registration fee for us to continue practicing as nurses. And on the same vein again, if we are to become financially independent, Without the registration fee, then that cannot be feasible. Because our registration fee, as we already presented, is the biggest chunk of our resource revenue. So if we say no nest should pay registration fee, it means we are not going to continue providing the service of protecting the public from unsafe <coughs> practice. However, in some, in some organizations, like the private sector, private health hospitals, the hospital itself pays for its employees. So we get the registration fees from the employer for its nurses. So maybe it's also something that we can be thinking as a government, whether to pay registration fee for all our nurses, doctors, pharmacists, all those professions that, uh, that uh, pay registration fees for them to practice, accountants and the like. So I think that's how I can say on becoming independent. We might only become independent if all nurses are paying up their registration fee. And if also the employers can help us, because they allow these unregistered nurses to practice. But when something happens to that nurse, they all come to us to help them solve the problem. Because the public will go to the court, will go, come to nurses' council complaining about the conduct and performance of the nurse. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much. Um, yes, there's a supplemental question. How much are nurses paying for the registration, registered nurses and the, the other card? Okay. Thank you. Uh, our fees are not very much. We have got, the lowest is paying 8,000 kwacha per year. The diploma nurse is paying 15,000 kwacha per year, and the degree nurse pays 23,000 kwacha per year. Thank you very much. I have withdrawn my comment about uh, um, the fees. Uh, go ahead and do as you please. Um, I would like to see you independent. So, and also there's uh, other professions, also accountants, I think they do pay registration fees. And the doctors also, I think, pay to the medical council. So maybe let's uh, um, leave it there. Um, I don't know whether there are any more questions. Uh, yes, uh, Zomba Chingale. Thank you, Chair. This is just a bit of information. Uh, in their introduction, one of the co-activities that they do is, the, is to see to it that uh, uh, they're checking on the, uh, on the nurses, uh, midwives, that their conduct in, in places where they are, it's according to what they have been taught in their places. I, want, I just want to know if, uh, if they have a figure as to how many uh, registered male midwives we have in our country. 
And uh, I want to know if you, ha you have ever found out why, as to why uh, a lot of women in the hospitals prefer uh, male mid midwives than uh, their fellow women. Thank you, Chair. Um, thank you very much. Uh, I, I have an answer, but I think I will let them answer. <laughs> it's okay. Um, thank you very much. I hope you got the question. <laughs> um, on how many male nurses we have in the profession, I may not, not be able to give uh, an answer now. But uh, of course, we have heard about that, that uh, women, especially in labor, they prefer male nurses than female nurses. That has come to us, and the research has also been done on that. But the main reason is that one of the reasons that, get, that came out during those research findings is that males do, you know, they have never experienced labor pains. So they feel for the woman when the woman is groaning with that pain during labor. Now we females have already passed through that. We know the end result. So they feel maybe the woman feels that this is a normal process, so doesn't understand the other woman, why she's going, doing all that, crying for, with pain, what the what. Well, the man does understand that the woman is groaning because that process is very painful whatsoever. The man has never experienced it, and he feels for the woman. That's what we got from the few studies that have been done as to why males are more provide better care than the females in the neighborhood. But we still need to do more research so that we can have the evidence-based evidence -based information to share. But this is one of the reasons. Thank you very much. Uh, are there any burning issues? Indeed, uh, main uh, more caring. And uh, that's why we, uh, women prefer men to help them deliver, um, as, as the study has, say, has shown. So I'm just confirming the um, scientific findings. <laughs> thank you so much. Uh, if there are no questions, I would like uh, to thank you very, very much for coming again. And Madam Registrar, you must think of inviting the health committee and the, you know, the HIV and AIDS committee to come and see what you do. Maybe take us to one of your sites. Maybe take us to, to the UK to see where these nurses are going. <laughs> you know, so, so that we appreciate. But uh, we thank you very, very much for coming and uh, we, we are your partner. We understand what your situation is, and we, we also feel for you. And uh, we will we'll fight for, for you to, to make sure that you, uh, you are well subvented. Uh, but uh, as of now, I can see that uh, your finance guys are running things well, very, very well. I think you need to pat them on the back. Um, the figures look good, although if you have deficits. But I know with a, lot, a, lot, a bit more aggression, uh, you should be able to balance your books very, very well, which is something that government wants. Uh, and uh, I think I, we had some issue with the uh, Minister of uh, Finance to, to, to comment on. Uh, do you remember? Yeah, can you just make that comment? Because Honorable Kalua asked a question, and that question was uh, in support of you. But we have the Minister of Finance here, who will get your information direct to government. So we shouldn't lose that opportunity. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much, Chair. Um, and I uh, would like also to thank uh, Honorable Member for Rompi East uh, for the uh, question. Um, and I, I think in the, in the process uh, of, of the interventions or, or the discussion, it looks like the, the question has been covered for me uh, because, the, um, number one, um, the organization has uh, um, avenues of, of uh, 
um, getting revenue or income, one of which is a subvention from, from government. So just to clarify that the, all the fees, all the revenue that they collect does not go to MG account number one. They remain with the institution and the, they use, the institution uses all, all that. So the portion that the, we are talking about, the 177 is on top of what the, the correct. Um, I know it's, it, it, yes, considering their operations or, or what they require to do is not, is not enough. And this is common for almost all the institutions because we have a limited uh, cake to, to, to share. So what we encourage is efficiency in utilization of, of, of the resources. Once we, we are okay, um, we can adjust the, the, the figure, maybe in the course of the, of the financial year, but at the same time, subvented organizations are being encouraged to, you know, intensify um, uh, revenue uh, collecting uh, initiatives so that the, uh, by and by they should not really uh, rely on or depend on government subvention. Uh, and the, here we've talked of, we know, moving towards being financially independent. I think he, that's the way to go. So, yes, we understand the, uh, that the, the figure that they want, that wanted to get from government as salvation is a slightly higher compared to what we have allocated, but it's because of uh, the cake that is available. Um, thank you very much. Yeah, thank you so much. Um, as I said, uh, we, we will include all the issues that you've raised, but our hope is that next year, come next year, you will not talk about failing to, co to collect. Uh, come next year, you'll be telling us that you have balanced your books and that if, uh, subversion should, uh, you know, should be minimized because you are able to stand on your feet. We are happy about that. Uh, I'll ask you, uh, Madam Registrar, to maybe give us your closing remarks, and then uh, we'll close the meeting. Thank you. As a council, <coughs> I would like to thank you so much for inviting us, and uh, we have submitted our budget, and it's our hope that uh, some of the areas that we have raised that we need the assistance will be assisted accordingly. As, we have, as I said in my presentation, that uh, our major role that can help in the improvement of nursing and midwifery practice is when we are visiting them. Because when we go there to visit them, we identify areas that they are supposed to improve. And it's more like a supportive supervision, reminding each other what are the standards, how, do we, how are we supposed to behave as nurses, and how are we supposed to provide care in a correct manner so that our patients are satisfied with our services. But we have gaps that make us fail to achieve our goals. So that's my only plea. Thank you so much for inviting us once again. Thank you very much indeed, um, uh, uh, Madam Registrar and the whole team for a very good presentation. This has been very good. Um, the finance people, well done. Uh, wish you well. Uh, whenever we call you, uh, please uh, do come, uh, even if it is at short notice like this. And also we like it that it is a highly powered delegation that you've brought. And don't forget uh, my uh, plea that you should invite our committee to come to where you are so that we appreciate you. Thank you so much indeed. We wish you well. Um, are you are you continuing with the meeting? <laughs>
Thank you so much indeed. We appreciate it. Um, we, we, we may uh, go and please travel well. Um, Honourable members, tomorrow we are meeting the um, Central Medical Stores and, and, who? and the Medical Council of Malawi. The Medical Council? Central Medical Stores Trust. Yes, yeah, Stores is there, but with the trust at the end. So we are meeting the Medical Council and the Central Medical Stores trust. Yes, one in the morning, the other in the afternoon. This, the, the, um, the medical council is more or less the same as uh, the, the nurses and midwives council in terms of well, the operations. It's just uh, that they look after doctors. Uh, the central medical stores has been our baby for some time. We, we have been fighting for the subvention and it has been coming. What has surprised me is that uh, Treasury is saying it is supposed to be 24 million. But my memory tells me it's supposed to be 35 million, not, not, not 24 million. So I think we are yet to, to, to hear what they say tomorrow. Otherwise, thank you so much for a very long day. Uh, let us go home and, and look after our loved ones. Good evening and welcome back. Uh, that's how we have concluded today's cluster two on health, HIV, AIDS, and nutrition. Area on, uh, we had a meeting with uh, UNICEF, and then we had uh, this meeting was with uh, medic, uh, Nurses and Midwives Council of Malawi. Uh, nurses and Mid Midwife Council of Malawi proposed budget for this year uh, is estimated to increase by 78% of which is 127 billion from 57 million in 2021-2022. Due to this uh, decrease in the budget allocation, the uh, Midwife Council has proposed budget for 2023 has been prioritized in the following areas. Safe practice for of nurses and midwives according to standards, quality and nursing and midwifery education and training services, accessibility and visibility of uh, uh, nurses and midwife council. Just to mention, uh, uh, the council also generates some uh, income from, from examination fees, accreditation fees, private practitioners fees, and other other receipts that they correct from uh, from different uh, entities. Uh, the Nurses and Midwife Council of Malawi was established in 1993, 1996 through the Act of Parliament. Tigulandire nisoni mazuru ano pagane mauno wanyumba ya malamulo dimene rundi tuta malizira kumano uno mazuru ano Mukluster inoya number two, imene ili yopari kizana ndi magomiti, osiana siana, komiti ya za umoyo, komiti yona za matenda eti, komaso, komiti yona za kajedwe kabu inogantu, osiana siana. Ndeno rundi mafoto kwa za mjizungu mja kuti, asa na kumane ndi nurses and midwife council, iwo wadu wa makuma na ndi UNICEF. Ndeti naona rundi UNICEF uja, anagambi rana, zintuzo, osiana siana. Ndeno rundi mafoto kwa za mjizungu mja kuti, midwife, uh, nurses and midwife council, haipata Drama zimina uwe mbege zira kudala ndile zikuwe na kudi zikuwe na ndi 78% imene ili 127 billion kujoke la pa 577 million imene na abelegedo wa mchaka cha 2021-2022 ndi enoro ni manena kudi uh, njiraso zi na zomu ama vizira ndrama anesis and midwife council ndi monga kula ndila ndrama zomu ya tuwa malimbira maeso Ndrama zomwe ama, ama vangita kudi mwina zivadala zimezi za private ziambe kukira nchido. Kwa maso ndrama zina ama zibeza mali city. Ndeno ungo nena rukudi nurses and midwife council ina kazi gitsidwa mchaka jana ndi 96. Ndi kufumile zedwa 
kwa nyumba ya maramuru. Ndiyeru mazuma wano ndi mene da marizira. Kika haletu kupa tirani zo siyana siyana zo kuzana ni magomidi o siyana siyana. Kwa mama wati kaleso magomidi yomwe ino imena da kare au kumana ndi antu o siyana siyana. Ndiyeru kupempani kuti mkale pomwepo kuti muone zambiri tarane tarane wa magomidi atu. Munali ndine mpato mlinde jitonga biliza ni kuone la kubweleza kwa kuru tawazi tuzatu zosiana siana usiku wabweli.